Welcome back to another LP Gallery tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about how to scale a 3D bevel's width and height with the object. Now, as you probably already know, if you apply a 3D bevel to an object or text and you scale that object bigger or smaller, the 3D bevel stays in the same width and height. It does not scale, and that's not what you want. You'd ideally like the bevel to scale proportionally with the object. So let's take a look at it. Here we have a nice rectangle with a nice bevel on it, and I have some text on top with a nice bevel on it. So the shape of this is 8 inches tall and 4 inches wide. Now I'm going to make a duplicate of this, and I'm going to scale that smaller. So let's say I want to make this 1 inch wide. So I'm going to select that. We're going to make it 1 inch wide. The bevel has stayed the same width and height for both the shape and the text, and you can see it just doesn't work. The bevel needs to stay in proportion to make this look as it does here. And if it doesn't do that, it just looks awkward. And it looks very awkward here. So let's try that again. Let's take this disc. So here we have a nice little disc. I'm going to make a duplicate. You can see that it's 6 inches by 6 inches. So let's say I make this 1 inch wide. So I make it 1 inch wide, and we get this. So once again, the bevel has retained its width and height. It is not scaled. And it looks nothing like this at all. This actually looks silly. So that's the problem when you're applying a 3D bevel to an object, is that when you scale it, the bevel stays the same width and height. So our goal with this tutorial is to show you how to scale it so it stays in proportion with the object, whether it's text or a shape, whether you make it bigger or smaller, how to keep the bevel width and height at the same proportion. Now on this slide, I have the 12 bevel types. You can see that I have them here, and I just broke them up and separated them out so you can see them individually. So what I have here is a rectangle with its default bevel width and height, and some text with its default beveled width and height. These are the different types, and these are the defaults that PowerPoint applies to them. So for a shape, for example in the circle, PowerPoint will apply a 6x6 point width and height to this. For a riblet, it will apply an 8x6 for that. Now, the text is a little bit different. PowerPoint will half this for the text. So if you create text and you apply a circle bevel to it, PowerPoint will apply a three-point width and height. For a riblet, it'll do four by three. So PowerPoint is choosing some defaults for all the bevel types. Now let's take a look over here. So what I have here is a one-inch circle and a six-inch circle. So you can see I have a nice bevel apply to it, and that's the default. So on a one-inch circle, I'm getting a really nice bevel. On a six-inch circle with the same bevel, it looks silly. It's so small, there's no point even using it. So the question becomes, what is PowerPoint doing? What is the measuring stick that PowerPoint is using to give us these defaults? One clue can be found in the fact that we're using points for the width and height. So if we're using points for the width and height, you're already familiar with points because you know your text is measured in points. Now text has been measured in points for the last couple hundred years. It's primarily a printing industry measurement and it's been applied for that long. In this example, we have a six point by six point. So how's PowerPoint come up with that number? Again, if we take our measuring stick that 72 points equals an inch, there's a good chance what PowerPoint is doing is saying that if you make an object that's an inch in diameter, these are the defaults that look the best on it. So we can assume that PowerPoint is using the arch stick of 72 points equals an inch as its measurement unit. So here we have two circles. One is the default one inch size, and another one is six inches. So if PowerPoint is using the 72 points to one inch yardstick measurement, then what PowerPoint is saying is that this is the perfect bevel for something that's one inch in diameter. So here I've got something that's six inches in diameter, and it's applying the same default. So if I want to create the same bevel but keep the proportion to the size of the object, it's a simple matter of doing a simple calculation. This is one inch. It's six by six. I click on this. It's six inches wide. So how do I scale this bevel? Well, it's a simple matter of multiplying this by six. So we got 36 by 36 and we have the perfect bevel. Now, at this view, it looks like the bevel might be thicker than it really is here, but it's not. If you actually, It's actually scaled proportionally correct to what this is. So there it is. So now I've just scaled my bevel larger. Now on this slide, I've got the same six inch diameter circle, 
but I've plied a different bevel and I've given it a custom width and height. So I've got 72 points width and 72 points height. Now let's say I want to scale this smaller. So let me duplicate this again. And let's say once again, I'd like to make this one inch in diameter. So I'm going to go to my scale and I'll make it one inch in diameter. And there it is. So you can see when you compare the two, this looks nothing like this at all. And that's one of the problems with the bevels width and height, and particularly with the width. If you have a large width on something and you scale it smaller, what happens is the width really takes over the height and you tend to get things that look like points or things that look like dome shapes, little rounded things. And that's not what we want. So I want this to be looking like this. So now I have to scale the bevel to match this. So how do we do that? It's pretty easy. If I know this is six inches, and I'm using 72 points as a bevel width and height, then it's just a matter of taking six divided to 72, and that will give us 12 points per inch. Since it's one inch, this should be 12 points width and 12 points height. And now it's proportional. Now again, when you have it this small, it doesn't look like it's proportional here, but it is exactly perfect proportion to this. So now my bevel width and height has been scaled perfectly to my object. Of course, it's pretty easy to calculate something that's a circle or a square to get the perfect bevel proportions. But what if you have something that's not perfectly proportional, like a rectangle that's much taller than it is wider? So here we have it. It's 7 inches high, 4 inches wide, and I've got a nice wide bevel of 72 points on it. I'm going to duplicate this, and just to keep it simple, I'll just make the width 2 inches even. So that's basically going to be about half the width and height. So this is what we get. So obviously that is not what I want. I want this bevel. Okay, so the bevel width and height has stayed the same size. So how do we compensate for that? How do we scale it? Well, if the width is half the size of this, then all we have to do is go to our bevel width and height, and it has to be half the size. So right now it's 72, so we just make it 36 by 36. And there it is, perfectly proportioned. We're going to try to play with something that's not nicely proportional like we've been doing. So here we got something at 7.53 by 4.3. So if we look at the bevels width and height, these aren't even. So we got something that's 48 point wide and 72 points high. So we got something that's really kind of a mix and match uh, shape to this with a mix and match bevel. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to just arbitrarily reduce in size. That may be something you're doing. Sometimes you're going to take a shape and maybe you want to reduce it to fit a certain area of your slide. So you're not going for a specific width and height. You're just reducing it to fit in a certain spot. So let me just duplicate this. And let me just grab the corner handle and let's just let me arbitrarily make it smaller. Just like that. Okay? So what do we have here now? So now we have something that's got a height of 3.5 one five inches and a width of 1.8 but with the same bevel so obviously I want this bevel to match this so how are we going to do that well first of all we got to find our measuring stick what is going to be our measuring stick here your measuring stick when something that has a different width and height is always to use the shortest side so the shortest side in the rectangle in this case is the width so let's take a look at this so we got to figure out our proportional, the difference between the two of them. And that's an easy calculation. So we're going to re require our nice little Windows calculator, or whatever calculator you like, to figure out what our proportional difference is. Okay, so let's take a look. So here we have the width. That's the shortest side, so we're always going by the shortest side. So we got 4.3. So we're going to take 4.3 divided by, and let's take a look at this one. And this one is 1.8. So 1.8. So what's the difference? It's 2.38. So let's type that in here. 2.38. Now, of course, you can just round this out. You don't have to be perfect or anything. I'm just using these numbers to show you that you can calculate any kind of a ratio in here. It'll work perfectly. Okay, so the ratio difference between these two is 2.38. So let's take a look at our bevel. So here we have a bevel of 48 point. So what are we going to do? Well, you're going to take 48 point divided by 2.3. So let's do that. 48 divided by 2.3 equals 20.86. Let's just say 21. So we'll say 21. And we've got to do this one now. So we'll, we'll clear that. So this is 72. So we take 72 divided by 
2.38. You get that, and what do you get? 30.25, so let's just say 30. And there it is. There's your perfect proportional bevel to your shape. So it's just a matter of doing a calculation, figure out the ratio difference between the two shapes, and applying that to your bevel's width and height. But remember to always use the shortest side. Now we'll look at the defaults as they're applied to text. So let's start off here. We have our inch, circle, and square. We have the relaxed inset bevel applied to them. And when they're using the default of six by six. So here I have text. I'm using an Arial black font, primarily because it's a very thick font, and the bevel edges are easier to see. So here I have them at 18, 36, 72, and 144. And in all cases, for the relaxed inset, when applied to text, the default bevel is three by three. So once again, as you notice, the PowerPoint just halves what it is to the shapes. Okay, so here it is. We have 18 point. We have 36, 72, 144. So at 18 point, you don't really see the incise of the bevel at all. Bevel thickness is a little too thick and it kind of rounds it out. So we don't get the edge at all at 18 points. So let's take a look at 36. Now at 36, you definitely see the edge. It's very clear, very visible, but it's so thick at that size that it kind of makes the text hard to read. At 72, we have a very nice edge, clearly readable text, clearly nice shaped bevel. Now at 144, the bevel is kind of reduced to more like an outline rather than standing out. So if we take a look at all this, where does the bevel stand out the best? And I think it's pretty evident that at 72 points, that's the bevel that you want. So it looks the clearest at this point, and the text is still very readable. So we could probably once again make the assumption that PowerPoint is using 72 points equals an inch as its standard for the text. Now having said that, it's not as cut and dried as that because it's not so much the vertical height of the text we're worried about, it's the thickness of the text. Fonts with thin letters, even if you apply the defaults, will be still too thick. So you're going to see that next. On this slide, we have three different fonts. We have Calibri, PowerPoint's default, we have Arial Black, and we have Brush Script. Now all three of these fonts are 72 points. Well, upon looking at them, they may not look like 72 points each, but they in fact are. How they measure text is by the vertical height. So the measure from the top part of the letters to the bottom part. So point size is measured vertically. Now having said that, it still doesn't mean that these are all physically the same height. If I take Calibri and I line it up to my Arial Black here, so I line up the base lines as you see here, you'll see that Calibri is in fact shorter than Arial Black. And why that is? It's because they build in more space. So Calibri has a little more top space than Arial Black. So that's one of the reasons you can't really overlap text of different fonts and expect their vertical heights to be the same. Some fonts have more vertical space built in, some have less. In Calibri's case, you can see that it's got more built in than Arial Black. Now, having said that, we're not really concerned with the vertical height of the text when we apply bevels to them. The problem comes in to the width, and you can see that Calibri is a very thin letter font, where Arial Black is a very thick letter font, and Brush Script is somewhere in between. So applying the nice relaxed inset bevel to these at the default size of 3x3, three three, you'll see that Calibri really doesn't show up very well. The bevel is so thick that it's really hard to tell what's going on, where in fact in Arial Black and Brush Script it looks pretty good. As a matter of fact, if you want to apply the 3x3 three three bevel width, to Calibri, you would have to make it at least 108 points. So in order to have Calibri look good at 72 points, you're going to actually have to take the width and height of this bevel down. So if we take it down, let's say, to two points, you'll see that it looks much nicer now. It isn't so cut and dried when we're applying bevels to text as it is to shapes. So we can probably assume that if you're going to be using thin letter fonts, under 72 points, the defaults probably will not work. You'll have to change the default bevel width and height to make them a little bit smaller. Where in fact, if you're using a thicker letter font, then at 72 points, you could probably use the default. So again, when you're applying your nice bevel types to your fonts, consider the letter thickness because that will play a big part. And again, if it's a thinner letter, 
either you're going to have to make it a larger point size or you're going to have to take the width and height down. So I've taken my 72 points and I've made it 108 points here and I applied the same default bevel. Now at 72 points, my nice default bevel looks really good. It really emphasizes the text nicely. I like, really like that. But at 108, it's starting to look a little thin. It's not as pronounced. So I would like to keep the same kind of proportion that I have here for the bevel and here. Okay, so again, we're going to have to make a calculation, but it's actually pretty easy because both the bevel's width and height and the text size is measured in points. Okay, so we have 108, we have 72. So here's our trusty Windows calculator. So we take 108 divided by 72. What's the difference? 1.5. So we know we're using a default of three points by three points. So we multiply that by three. And what should the bevel width and height be? Should be 4.5. Okay, so if we go here to our width and height, we spin it up. So now you've got a bevel that's proportional to what it was at 72 at 108. And to me, that looks great. I didn't like it at the default of three by three. That is better if you scale the bevel width and height with the size of the object because it looks more natural to it. Okay, so now you know how to scale the bevels width and height with a shape. You now know how to scale the bevels width and height with text. We have one more thing to look at, and that's word art. We've all done word art. You've taken text, converted it into word art, and you stretched it and made it larger, made it smaller. Now what happens if you apply a bevel to that and you want to scale the bevel with the word art? Do you do it by points, like you do in text, or do you do it by the width and height, like you do it in a shape? So on this slide, I have a word art object, and I have a nice thick bevel to it. So I'm going to duplicate this object, and I'm going to make the duplicate half the size. So I have it here. You can see that's inch in height, so I'm going to make the duplicate half an inch. As always, the bevel's width and height does not scale. It's the same as it is here. Here it looks perfect, here it looks terrible. So now I have to scale the bevel's width and height. So what am I doing? Am I going to be using points like in text, or am I going to use the width and height like in the shape? Well, if we take a look up here, you can see that the point size grayed out because you can free scale a word art object any size you want. So immediately the point size could grayed out and there won't be of any value at all. So now you have to treat the word art object like any other shape. So if you recall from working with shapes, how do we scale this? Well, the best way to scale it is to take the shortest side. So the shortest side here is the height. Okay, so we know that it's half an inch, so we need half the bevels width and height. So if we go to the text, you can see that we have four by four, so we need half of that. So we'll make that two, two by two. And there's your perfect proportion. Okay, so when you're working with word art object, remember it's more of a shape than it is text. Even though you can change the text to a different font, you can't scale it by the point size. So you're going to have to treat it with the bevel width and height if you want to scale that as a shape. So there you have it. Now you know how to scale a bevel's width and height on shapes, text, and word art. So we hope you found this tutorial helpful. And if you did, check out our other tutorials on PowerPoint. Thank you for watching.